Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We have the famous Jim Brown, the designer of the Windrider 17. We're going to go through all his thoughts here. On the <laughs> and uh, we're going to go over the design, the, how the origins of the Windrider 17. We're actually sitting in his Windrider 17 right now. It's the, the turtle. Box turtle. The box turtle. But we're going to sit down. We're going to discuss the, the origins, the design, what was bad, what is good. And, hey uh, guys, my name's Ziggy, and I'm out boat camping the barrier islands of the Gulf of Mexico. So jump aboard, because I'm going to take you bastards sailing. Hey, what's the next one on Steering there? at speed. Oh, yeah, we covered that. <laughs> All right, I yeah. thought so. Cracking. Yeah. Cracking. Go right in. What you're talking about with the holes is cracking. Yeah. So uh, uh, there, there's a lot, of, there, <laughs> a lot of difference between different formulations of polyethylene, which is what these things are made of. Right. Um, and the polyethylene is made from ethylene, which is a byproduct of the petroleum cracking process. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the refineries used to burn it off because they didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. And then some brilliant chemist someplace figured out how to polymerize it, that is, make the molecules lay down in layers like fish scales, uh, uh, molecularly speaking. And all of a sudden, it became the most useful substance on the planet, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's floating around in the in the sea and you know, it's, it's plastic. Everywhere. It's the same stuff as plastic bags and plastic garbage cans and soda and, bottles and yeah, everything else all comes off the same. It's all in the same family. Yep. And uh, and so um, the uh, the people that make this stuff. Um, they provide it in lots of different formulations for what the, uh, the, the manufacturer is actually molding and what they're producing. And in the case of boats and gasoline cans especially, mm -hmm. um, they use so-called virgin polyethylene. Okay. And that means that it hasn't been through the molding cycle before and then been melted down and used again. It's virgin polyethylene, and uh, uh, it, it's the strongest and the longest lasting and the most ultraviolet resistant. All right. They also put a UV inhibitor in the plastic formulation for things like gas cans and boats. They put a, a UV inhibitor in the plastic, which is very important for boats particularly mm -hmm. the ones that are going to sit outside right. in places like Florida or Texas. Texas, you know, yeah, Virginia. Texas sun will eat anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, <clears throat> um, of course, virgin polyethylene is more expensive than any of the others. Mm -hmm. Virgin uh, anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, uh, the physical properties can be modified and still have virgin polyethylene, you can make it stiffer for its weight, but then it's more difficult to melt it down and get it to stick to the inside of this mm -hmm. cast aluminum mold that they get hot by putting it in an oven and rotating it and all yeah, that. That's a stuff. massive, There's a, they've got a YouTube video of them being molded and those are just yeah. some massive big molds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to learn about that stuff. I took that video. Oh, okay. And, uh, and I was really taken with it, man. I I, I thought, God. And and at the uh, at the time they had what they called a double shuttle oven, so they'd have two molds, uh, and they never did this for wind riders, except for the floats. But for for the main hull, and, and they never had two molds because they were so big yeah, and expensive. Yeah, too big. Yeah. But uh, for the kayaks that have two molds for a given model and um, and there'd be one in the oven cooking and the oven rocks from end to end while mm. the thing is in there rotating and the plastic is melting and smearing itself all around the yeah. inside of this cast aluminum mold, you know. And the other oven is out there being charged with more plastic. They dump in a, a weighed amount of right. polyethylene in pellets. It looks like deer poop you mm -hmm. know? and uh, any color and any formulation lots of different characteristics uh, and so as as uh, 
the uh, the Wind Rider assets, the molds, pass from one ownership to the other, which it's done three times now. Um, uh, the uh, the bean counters in these separate entities might decide that they can use plastic that's a little stiffer for its weight. Right. So they don't have to use as much plastic and they can build a, lot, a, a lighter boat. But if you take that boat that's made out of that stiffer plastic and uh, put it in Alaska and it gets real cold <laughs> in the wintertime while it's sitting around doing nothing, and if in that boat is like there is in the bow of a Windrider 17, there's a, an aluminum uh, frame, a, a, a so-called king plank, that, that runs from the forward crossbeam all the way out to the bow to support walking on the foredeck. Mm -hmm. It's just under the deck. Yeah. yeah. And if that beam is a little bit too long, so it has to get stuffed in there up against the bow, and the boat gets down below zero in the winter time. The boat contracts, and the aluminum tube doesn't much, okay, not nearly yeah. as much. And so you're actually poking that aluminum tube out through Ooh. the bow. And so <laughs> some of the wind riders, without being in Alaska, have cracked around this the stem head fitting. That is where the head stay comes down to the bow, not mm -hmm. the head stay, the jib stay. The head stay goes to the bow. I mean, pardon. The head stay goes from the bow to the head of the mast. We don't have one of those in wind riders, unless you have a reacher. Then stays run fore and aft. And so the jib runs on a stay that only goes up two thirds of the way, or mm -hmm. about two thirds of the way. And, uh, and that's called the jib stay, not the head stay, because it doesn't right. go all the way to the head. So stays run fore and aft, shrouds go sideways and uh, athwart ships out to the, to the rails. And so all of this sailor talk stuff that sailors use uh, so blithely uh, becomes unintelligible to uh, a lot of our clientele. Yes. You know, these boats have been bought by people who normally wouldn't have one. They just look at it and say, hey, that <laughs> looks like I could sail that one, you know, who's got these floats on them. <laughs> it's exactly so that's the like way I got I my, People ask me on my videos why I don't use Port or starboard, I, I do everything and like people, someone that's never been on a yeah. boat would call it, yeah. it because most of the people watching my videos don't yeah. know that language, so yeah, it's okay. I keep, it, keep yeah. it simple. Yeah. Anyway, so. Yeah. So, um, uh, the uh, cracking can be repaired. We've also had cracking in the 16 footers where the molded in portion of the cross beams protrude out through the plastic. They crack around that place where the plastic is wrapped, all molded, all the way around the 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 the, the main cross beam center portion of the tube, where it comes out of the of the plastic. We've had cracking there and there. My wind rider cracked in all four places. Oh wow! It doesn't matter. Don't worry. It's going to be okay. You don't have to repair <laughs> the sixteen at all. All right. Unless you want to fill the cracks up with something. So that they don't look cracked. Right. You, know, you can do that if you want to, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, there you can. And uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, we should have Mike McGarry here to talk to him. He's had cracking in other places, um, but he's fixed it with fiberglass and G Flex. Okay. So if you have to patch your boat, Get the polyethylene part of it good and clean on both sides of the of the repair. Get it really clean and slightly roughed up. Rough it up with a fine grain sandpaper, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you know if you want to practice a bit on a garbage can, <laughs> a, it's a pretty good idea to heat that surface. And a, a hair dryer won't get it quite hot enough. You almost have to have a flame or a heat yeah. gun. They actually have the, the little irons just for, for the plastic welding and such. Too. Oh yeah. There's, there's, there's lots of things you can you can do that are beyond the scope of most people. But a hair dryer won't get it quite hot enough. But 
if it starts to smoke, it's way too hot. You can do it with a <laughs> propane <laughs> torch, <laughs> but you've got to stand back about 18 inches. Uh -huh. Get that surface hot enough so that the molecules in there have a plant, have a have a chance to repolymerize All right. Right? and get you know really lined up and so then as soon as possible now make your repair with fiberglass saturated with G flex and uh, you definitely can repair polyethylene boats um, if they get really banged around in the rocks they probably won't need repair but if they do <laughs> <laughs> we've had some of them be really bashed up and come out of it just fine yeah it's it's, it's crazy the beating they can take yeah my friend uh, uh, Joe Hudson had one of his uh, 16 footers get pinned between a concrete bulkhead and a big fishing boat and the fishing boat it was a big thing you know and it it squeezed the boat from the sides so hard that it bent the cross beams down. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't damage the hulls at all. <laughs> okay. I, I had a cross beam bend once. Really? And I took it to a, a muffler shop and they had a car on a lift. They just lowered down on it and just until it's flattened out straight to the cement and went really? right back in and go. Yeah. Really? I took it to Midas. Midas took care of it. Look at it. Floats leaking. Oh, yeah. On the list? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've had uh, trouble with the float hatches leaking. Those little screw-out ports yeah. in the floats. If you find water in the float, it's probably not coming in around the cross beams. Where right. They, well, they, I, I get water. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, open up that thing and butter it up good on both sides, both both the thread in, the thread in and the thread out portion of the thing. Butter it up with uh, Vaseline. Oh, all right and screw it back down in there and wipe up. And then you need a little spanner. It's properly called a spanner. Just a stick of wood about eight inches long with, uh, let's say it's a, a one by two. Yeah. About eight inches long. And it's got a couple of screws screwed into it that stick out just far enough. So you can lay that thing down on the hatch cover and the screw heads will protrude down and into the give hollows. You a leverage. And now you can get it good and uh, tight or you can get it off. I'm going to have know. to build one of those. Sometimes yeah. I just got to give a little tap to get it going. Well, I've got one of those around here someplace. I can't reach it right now. <laughs> so um, uh, it's, it's easy to fix that leak, but it's not easy to drain the floats with through the drain plugs if the boat's on the trailer. Yeah. Uh, because you've got to get the bow way up in the air. Yes. And you can do that by unhitching from the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And Just if you've got a, something like a step ladder or something, you can stick it under the tongue of the trailer right. in order to It'll get the floats out. to drain. Yeah, the older ones, my old ones got the drains and the new one doesn't. They quit <clears> putting the drains right. in at some point. The drains yeah. out, yeah. It must have been, uh, I figured it must have been a cost-saving uh, situation there. Uh, it's because they didn't know how to, the, that thread at the drain plug has to be put in after the molding is mm -hmm. done. Because you couldn't get the mold out of right. the hole, huh? So it had to be have tapped. A, a hot tool you put in yeah. to form the threads for the drain plug, and the new molders didn't know how to do that, <laughs> and so they were <laughs> toasting <laughs> boats. They okay. screw it up, mess know? it up, yeah. And uh, so some of the some of the problems are, are in production. So they just decided not to not to have drain plugs. Oh man, what a problem <laughs> that is! You got to pump the water out of oh, every yeah, hole. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Jeez. But uh, a, a little pump will work for the floats. One of those short plunger type pumps will work for the yeah, floats. Yeah, little kayak pumps. Yeah. That's what I do with it. Or I throw a towel in there and pull it out, uh -huh. wrap it around the aka, and just uh -huh. use it to twist the water out oh. and throw it back in. Oh. But when I store it on the trailer, I store it with those caps off. Oh, do you? Because I find it just it lets oh. the air let it evaporate out. And, oh. I see. Because even sitting on a trailer, I don't see, well, Texas is so humid, it'll get yeah. water in it. Yeah. Without even being on the water, oh, because huh. it's just it's just you know the humidity. So someone someone had mentioned huh. to leave those caps off, and since I do that, I don't have that problem when I'm storing it. Really? But uh, really? Well, uh, if I did that here, I'd have raccoons living. You know. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> and that wraps up episode three with the Jim Brown. In episode four, we go deep into the trampolines. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss more of this series because I'm going to take you bastards sailing.